Today on the YY Family, I'm gonna find out how the TV remote control works. I wish Max and Victor would turn off the television when they leave the room. My uncles are going to unbelievable lengths to show me why we sneeze. We're inside a nose. Grandpa's gonna take me on a trip to a star. And Grandma's gonna explain why thunder always follows lightning. And my mom is gonna show me the plants a lot busier than I ever knew. Max will be telling us they sing and dance. Maybe. You'll just have to find out. Come along with me and meet the smartest family in all the town. The Y.Y. family. Mom can make it plain to see that what goes up eventually comes down. The Y.Y. family. Come and meet the Y.Y. And I'll tell you why. Meanwhile, there's a dragon making some kind of a potion in a bath. The Wawa family. And Grandma's no stranger. She can teach you all the dangers found in that. The Wawa family. Max is a mechanical marble. Why? I know Poppy kind of guy. Maybe he can show you the answer now. If you want to take a look inside. Everybody's in the lather. Rushing, wondering what's the matter. Every person hears a cry. He rushes to the What's the deal? What could it be? It's just the Wawa family. Why? You have seen nothing like this. I used to guys you can't miss. We wonder what's inside you. These are just the guys to guide you. Come on, let's go. Let's go, let's go. These guys are in the know. Micro and Scopo. What's wrong, Victor? Have you caught a cold? Now, now, no need for all this. A sneeze doesn't necessarily mean we've caught a cold. It doesn't? Then why do we sneeze, Uncle Micro? It's just a reflex. You know, something your body does automatically. It yes. is? Now cut that out! Anyway, Victor, we sneeze anytime something tickles the inside of our nose. Wow! Are we gonna travel to the inside of our nose to check it out? Yeah, maybe later. Yeah, right now, my favorite opera is on, starring my favorite opera singer, Lucretia Von Dreck. Wait, Micro, that's not the remote control. It's the gizmo. Wow, there's something you don't see every day. A forest inside a cave. Forest? Cave? We're inside a nose! Well, now, as you can see, the nasal passages are lined with small hairs which help to keep dust in the air from getting into our lungs. My crow, do you hear that music? Yeah, yeah that's just the opera. The opera? We're in the nose of Lucretia Von Dreck! There's a plot twist no one saw coming. Come on! When we breathe in, and the air goes through this passageway. My crow, what are these green hairs? Uh, those are called cilia. I didn't think this show could get any cilia. <laughs> anyway, when a foreign body... Like dust, right? Right, Victor. You see, when a foreign body gets into the nose, these little cilia catch it and push it toward the exit. My crow, help! Scopo! Scopo! Was close. Look, Victor. These represent foreign bodies in the nasal cavity. Why, if the nose detects a foreign body, it notifies the brain immediately. The brain could cause us a lot of trouble, Scopo. Mine always does. Because the brain sends back the signal that triggers a sneeze. Oh, Micro, I think the foreign bodies are us. Why, I do believe you're right. <laughs> We've only got a few seconds until the lungs fill up. The air that's forced out by a sneeze travels 100 miles an hour. Hold on. Uh, hi there. Hey, don't mind us. We're big fans. <laughs> that was great, Uncle Micro. Do it again. Do it again. Don't, don't touch, touch that. that. Gee, if 
think they'd never changed the channel before. How does it do this? How does it do that? Max is the one with the electronic knack. Machines are his thing, so don't go berserk. Max on the job. You'll find out how they work. to laugh with laugh the Clown. Today he's the Egyptian dung beetle, making his weary way home after getting a pie in the face. I want to watch laugh the Clown. Lifestyles of the Egyptian dung beetle is educational. I don't want to be educated. Huh? Oh, what the? <laughs> oh, you mind? I didn't know the remote control could do that. The remote control isn't going to do much of anything if you two wear out the batteries by pushing the channel changer button all the time. Gee, Raffo, do you know how the remote control works? Oh, I've got a show to do. You explain it to the kid. <laughs> so long, folks. All right, Victor. On this keypad, each button sends an infrared beam to a receiver built into the television. No, I don't see any beam. That's because our eyes can't see infrared light, unless you wear special glasses. Wow! Now I see it, but what makes the infrared beam? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> oh, and here we are. That's the answer? Batteries? Well, no, the batteries just supply the power. The stuff that makes the beam isn't here. Oh, I didn't know remote controls had doors. They made a special one for us. The circles on this circuit board send the different infrared signals to the television, depending on which button above us is pushed on the keypad. Hey, what's happening? Somebody's picked up the remote control. Oh, I wish Max and Victor would turn off the television when they leave the room. Huh? Oh. Quick, let's ride the beam out of here. The remote control buttons use the infrared beam to send combinations of short and long waves. The different combinations of short and long waves tell the television to turn on or off or change the channel. But how does the TV read the signal? We're about to find out. No! <laughs> yeah! The combinations of short and long waves go through the decoder, which translates them into instructions. See? Now they're changing the channel. These are microchips, just like the ones inside computers. This one is the encoder, and that one is the decoder. When you hit a button on the remote, like off, it sends a signal to the encoder microchip. The encoder codes the signal into instructions and then sends a series of electrical impulses to a light-emitting diode, called an LED for short. These pulses form a binary code signal. Ones and zeros. Right. This signal is received by the decoder in the TV set and decoded so that it understands what you want it to do. Off. So, if I want to switch it on again, I just push this button, right? Hey, come back here with that. Are you two at it again? So, uh, what do you want to watch? Eh, uh, nothing. It's too nice a day to be inside watching TV. Hey, the question that you have an answer serious. The animals and plants are not so mysterious, so have no fear. Everything will be made clear. Banana's making quite hard here. Victor? Nothing much. I'm just looking at the plants. They don't seem to do very much. Well, what do you expect from a bunch of plants? About as much as we expect from you. Actually, plants are very busy. What are they doing? They're generating new cells to make them grow. They're using sunlight to help them make food. They're breathing. Plants breathe? All living things breathe. But how do plants breathe? All righty, let's start with the lungs. Breathe in. <laughs> Deeper. <laughs> Good. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
That's not how plants breathe. They don't have lungs. Look here. Where? I can't see a thing. Look closer, Quack. See those little holes there? Plants breathe through them. Each one of those holes is called a stoma, or stomata if there are more than one. Stoma comes from a Greek word that means opening. Yeah, yeah, there they are. I, I can see them. Hello there, stomata. That's how plants absorb the carbon dioxide they need from the air. Stomata also help the plant get rid of excess water. <laughs> excess water? Next you'll be telling us we're gonna drown! Ugh. <sighs> Somebody turn off the water! Quack, quick, where are you? There they are, Mom! I might have known they'd find a way to get into trouble. Hey! Look! When the air becomes very dry, the stomata closes...